and we are happy to be joined on the Milford Informer this week for the first time now for the 17th season of Claflin Hill, which is set to start in just a matter of days. Paul Serpine, the director of the Claflin Hill Symphony Orchestra. Paul, once again, thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Tim. Always good to be here. <laughs> so 17th season, uh, ready to get underway. Uh, how exciting is it now to, to be this close to, to another big season, which just it seems like it's jam-packed with, with a lot of great stuff? Um, well, I mean, today I'm like bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I mean, uh, people are still calling in and, and buying season tickets and getting ready to buy tickets for next week's concert. And I'm running all over the place, taking care of this and that. And I was actually in my office the other night till like... Uh, uh, like 10.30 after I came back from teaching all day to to work on things um, but in a sense it's all good you know I mean it's uh, it's fun the, the anticipation is palpable people I talk to on the phone when they call in to order tickets um, they're telling me how excited they are how great it is that it's getting ready to launch again and you know it's like people look forward to you know, we hate to see summer go. Fall is nice, you got the foliage, but you know, I'm really a, a summer person myself and I, it really is kind of a bummer when summer comes to its end. And But the really good thing is that that also means Claflin Hill is starting <laughs> up again. And the musicians, I mean, are all excited. You know, on Tuesday night, November 1st, we convene for our first rehearsal for the November 5th concert. Um, it's always kind of like this big family reunion night, you know, everybody coming into the town hall for rehearsal, hugging each other, you know, taking out pictures of their kids, their vacations. I mean, it's like seeing a gigantic family finally all coming back together again. And I, I kind of feel like, you know, the dad, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, we've got this great season of, of concerts, uh, great programming that's... Uh, just looking forward to getting it underway, and uh, it's kind of hard to believe, 17 years. Every season it seems like you're, you're bringing something new, something different to the table, and this year, uh, I'm looking at the, the, the description of this season, you call it a year-long exploration of the symphony form. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're a symphony orchestra, which means, you know, um, orchestra is the noun. Symphony is an adjective, meaning it's an orchestra of the size that can do these major works of the great composers. A symphony was a form of composition, you know, usually consisting of four different movements in the work, you know, a big, you know, strong, uh, energetic opening movement, sometimes a slow movement, maybe a dance movement like a scherzo or a minuet, and then a rousing finale. Um, you know, Haydn and Mozart kind of really brought the symphony form to, to what it became in the classical period, and then Beethoven kind of blew, blew the whole form apart and changed everything. And then after that, everybody that approached the symphony form, you know, had to do so with the idea of what, you know, Beethoven had made possible, you know, bigger orchestras, uh, change up of the format of the movements. Um, you know, Beethoven gave titles to his symphonies. They had a kind of ongoing theme in a symphony. It wasn't just like an exercise in form writing. It was, you know, it told a narrative, a story. And, you know, and in a, in a way, in the last couple of years, we haven't actually done a whole lot of actual symphonies in our programming. So um, I chose, uh, we're going to open with uh, Beethoven's Egmont Overture, not a symphony, but a very strong and visceral kind of opening overture, you know, written at around the same time as a lot of his symphonies, and then explore uh, the Symphony Number no. 5 of Felix Mendelssohn. He was a German composer, just a little bit right after Beethoven. Um, his, he wrote really wonderful music. He's almost underrated as a composer. Um, very pleasant music, beautiful melodies, uh, well constructed. And his fifth symphony is called the Reformation. He actually had written it um, in honor of like uh, the might have been the 200th anniversary of the Lutheran Protestant Reformation. And then the second half is going to be devoted to Brahms Symphony Number no. Four. Now Brahms, I mean, wrote in his diaries and letters about you know you have no idea what it's like to have to struggle 
in the shadow of him, meaning Beethoven, you know? I mean, it took him 20 years to release his first symphony. I mean, he wrote it, he kept tweaking it, he wouldn't want anybody play it, he wouldn't let anybody see it because he was afraid it would be compared poorly with Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. If you could, like, put another 1800s personality that Brahms was kind of like, it would be Abraham Lincoln. Hmm. He's like the musical Abraham Lincoln. I mean, there's moments where he's melancholy, moments where he's struggling against fate, and moments where he's just so noble and like writes music that just kind of, uh, you know, exemplifies, as Lincoln would say, the better angels of our nature. You know, again, you know, the best that we could be as human beings, as fellow citizens of the world. And, you know, Brahms, Brahms is a great man. So just a week from now is when you will officially open the season. The concert begins at 7.30, of course, in Upper Town Hall, and uh, the orchestra gets gets together for the beginning of this week to uh, to get rehearsals underway. And, and again, just it begins a, a pretty exciting concert series. You've got the Holiday Pops on December 10th, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that I'm sure the uh, the, the, the tickets are, are, are quickly going for that. Yes, they are, uh, actually. And, and are there... Uh, I'm sure there are still seats available for for the concert coming up on the fifth as well. And and, and yes, how can people uh, uh, go about uh, pr um, procuring The easiest tickets? thing is go on quafflinhill.org. You can, you know, click on the buy tickets. I mean, you know, the whole season is spread out there. You can buy individuals. There's package. You can go and click and buy a package. Buy the whole season. You can pick out your own seats on that on that website apparatus there. Um, print out your own tickets at home, you know, that saves you money. Um, and then you just walk in the door that night with your printout and your tickets and get ready to enjoy. Um, you know, there's also the Chamber Series ongoing over in Whitensville at the Sing Performance Center. That opened last week. Had a nice audience for that. Um, and we have a few surprises coming up this year as well. So. I mean, Claflin Hill is growing. In the shadow of, of Ludwig von is the season premiere concert. It happens on Saturday, November 5th, so just a little over a week from now. Uh, the show begins at 7.30 over in Milford Upper Town Hall. Still tickets available, so head over to claflinhill.org to, uh, to, to get the ticket information, a very simple process over there. And we'll, of course, have the full concert season uh, here on Milford TV. Uh, but we, as always, we encourage you to, to go out to, to Milford Town Hall for the performances. You can't get better uh, than the live performances over there from Claflin. And so, Paul, we really look forward to this season. Well, thanks a lot, Tim. And uh, we'll be talking all year, I think, about things. Hey, everybody, this is Tim Coet. Make sure you check out full episodes of The Milford Informer on Milford TV. New episodes air every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. and then re-air frequently over the course of the weekend. Milford TV can be found on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 38. And if you live in the Milford area and have an idea for a news story, you can contact us at news at milfordtv.net.